Smut on Smuts. I'm with author Angus Douglas. And uh, Angus, you've got some gossip for us. I have indeed. Uh, thank you very much, James. Um, so, Smuts was famous for these wonderful, intense relationships he had with various highly intelligent uh, women, the Clark yeah. sisters from England, who were Quaker, very religious family, okay. wonderful intellects, very, very liberal. Um, and Princess Frederica we talked about in another podcast, and there was also Lady Daphne Moore, who I'll talk about in a moment. Now, Smut said, um, and if you're interested in this, you can read uh, Pete Bjorkus's biography, or biographical, there's three books, and one of them is yeah. The Romantic Smuts. And uh, Smuts said, I have a weakness for women, not in the sexual sense, but from some inner affinity and appeal. Now, was he fibbing about that, you may ask. Um, he, he certainly sustained um, platonic relationships um, with, with various women happily enough, so we, we mustn't suggest that he was an out-and-out -out predator. I don't think he was at all. Um, but um, it's not too hard to find the odd bit of dubious um, information about him. So. One of the stories, okay, now this is something that you won't find in print, but I heard it from okay. one of the descendants of um, Sir David Graaf. Now, Sir David Graaf was the father of Sir de Villiers Graaf, who was leader of the United Party um, after Smuts died in 1950. Sir de Villiers Graaf took over from Smuts. So the Graafs were, uh, made their millions in cold storage. One of the, we had one of the biggest companies in Africa, and he even um, helped to support the war effort in the First World War, and hence he was given this baronetcy um, and made Sir de Villiers Graaf, which, which is carried on in the family, I think, even to this day. And they've got a farm, I think it's called Grendel, um, in the Cape where they breed horses. Anyway, so the Graaf family are very famous. They're still very well off and very renowned South African family. Um, in the 1920s, uh, by that stage, um, um, uh, sorry, possibly a bit later, even in, into the 30s, Sir, de Villiers, uh, Sir, uh, Sir David, the original Graf, had married Eileen van Heerden. She was the daughter of a, a priest, a pastor, and she was 30 years um, his junior. So, the, And he was 53. Now, I'm 53. Um, and you might want to say, well, good work if you can get it. But he, she was not only 30 years younger. She was also very, very attractive and vivacious. Um, she was certainly a real catch and... Um, he, uh, you could say he deserved it. He was in, in his own right uh, an extraordinary character. He was a philanthropist. Um, he was a highly successful businessman. He was very, very likable. He was involved, by the way, in the Treaty of Versailles. Um, he was a reasonable man, a good man all round. And everyone who knew him only had uh, good things to say about him. Anyway, so he marries at the ripe old age of 53. Um, he marries and he, and he has children by her. Um, but of course, you know, b back then um, things were different and there might have been questions about <laughs> why Sir David Croft took so long to get married. Not only that he took so long to get married, but um, as I heard from my informant, who is indeed a descendant uh, of the Croft family, yes. um, and she knew or got to speak to um, the housekeeper uh, they were in, I, I don't want to say it was, it was in Cape Town that the Crafts lives. I'm not sure, it, it was uh, Rondebosch or Claremont, um, w w in that area, Weinberg, around there. And um, it's a beautiful house, and Jan Smuts, they would all dine together. It was, they were all very, very close. They were very much involved um, in, in, in government in the you know, United Party back then, or the South African Party, it might have been called in those days. And they were all very close. Um, and the story is, is that Jan Smuts would actually stay over in the room of the vivacious, much younger Eileen. And it was sort of common cause and all accepted, um, you know, that, um, that this would happen. You know, not like Sir David didn't know about it, but maybe he was quite happy um, <laughs> for someone else to be taking care of his wife. Now, that is the prurient uh, gossip. I heard it. You won't get that from Pit Bjorkus' book. I just heard that. And I'm, I'm, um, the person I heard it from said, you know, please don't mention that I told you that, so I'm not going to mention their name. Um, 
anyway, that, that's one aspect of the gossip. Now, there's a, a, a rather tragic element to this gossip. Now, you must understand that when Smuts died, he dies in 1950, and um, I see Smuts, he apparently com comes across as he had a massive heart attack. He was, he was 80 on the, on the dot, more or less. Uh, lived a most amazing life, and um, you know she actually found his, his body, and he died. And, and she, um, is, as the story goes, um, you know, r within short order, within a, you know a few hours of finding his body and maybe calling the hearse or something, she went back to her ironing. Uh, interestingly, um, anyway, m m and one can say, well, she was a sort of stoic and you know um, level-headed person, and wasn't given to sort of fits of emotion and this was a dignified thing to do anyway however uh, she was given to a fit of emotion when she discovered now everyone knew she knew that he had these intense uh, as he puts it sort of spiritual relationships with these amazing intellectual women but when she came across one set it was from uh, one of the Clark sisters and, and the sort of sheer extent of it um, which actually did bring her to great anger and she actually burnt a whole lot of these letters. Um, many have remained and there are many letters um, you know, in, in keeping. Uh, however, the ones uh, from one of these Clarkses, many of them were actually burnt, the ones that, that, that she'd sent to Smut. So she was in fact quite um, upset um, about the sort of intensity of his relationships, uh, or this particular relationship. And we, in the, another podcast, we talked about the, you know, the disappearance of the letters to Princess Frederica. But anyway, those to the Clark sister were burnt. Now, so there's a rather tragic element to this, and, and perhaps something to do with a husband who's, um, you know, available to so many other people and available to so many other women uh, would have obviously been a cause of. Uh, some pain. So the other thing I was sworn to secrecy um, not to say anything about was that in actual fact, and I haven't heard this anywhere by the way, and you must understand that everything word written about I.C. Smuts, um, I.C. Cricker as she was, uh, made him a wonderful old Afrikaans royalty, the Crickers, Crickers and the Smuts is getting together, so that was, you know, something. But, and she was an amazing, highly intelligent woman in her own right. Unfortunately, she lived in a time where she couldn't pursue what she really wanted, which was to do medicine. Uh, and she became Smuts's wife and didn't really have a career as such. But today, you would imagine she would. She was a very talented person, highly intelligent. But that she, during all this, that she was caught on more than one occasion, sort of shoplifting it whether it was John Orr's or whatnot. It was a sort of great embarrassment and, you know, the people, uh, the shop owners sort of knew who it was and they would call up, you know, some fixer in the, in the government to come and <laughs> sort it out, you know. <laughs> so, well, anyway, you know, rather sort of tragic element to Smuts's wanderings. Anyway, so the story gets... Um, you know, even more, well, slightly more prurient. We don't have too many juicy details, but um, we'll, we'll squeeze them for what they're worth. But Pete Bjorkus, um talks a bit about, um, as I say, we've talked about Smuts's relationship with Princess Frederica during the Second World War, but he also had a very strong French friendship with Lady Daphne Moore, and, and she was the wife of the what was sort of Kenyan high, British High Commissioner to Kenya, something like that. Lady Daphne Moore, again, highly intelligent, um, you know, interesting and um, amazing woman. The Smuts really picked them, you know. Um, and they, of course, liked him. He was an amazing you know, genius, really, you know, and who, who wouldn't be, which, what intelligent wouldn't, woman wouldn't be interested in hanging around him. But the Peruvian gross, gossip that um, Pete Bjorkus mentions is that when he was staying, this is now during the Second World War, um, he's, when he was in Cape Town, he'd stayed, is it, is it Tain Hayes? Help yes. me out here. That yes. is the official residence, Tain Hayes. Um, or not Krutuskir, sorry. Yes. I think it might uh, be called yes. Krutuskir. It's, it's it is Krut I think it's Krutuskir, which, yeah, of course, the hospital's also named Krutuskir. But anyway, he's staying there in this lovely um, you know, mansion that belongs to the residence for the Prime Minister. 
and staying with him were Lady Daphne Moore's two lovely daughters, um, who were, I believe were both at UCT at the time, the University of Cape Town, and studying whatever they were studying. And Smuts being, you know, this generous person, obviously said, we don't have all these rooms for you, well, of course, let the girls stay in the house. Anyway, so on one occasion, off the girls went out for a night in the town, and um, one of them gets back uh, to find Smuts, young Smuts, the great helmsman of the South African state, the great um, statesman and, you know, uh, harbinger, bringer of world government, etc., lying on her bed. <laughs> it's, you know, it's 12 at night and she's been out and she's come back to her room to collapse on her bed and there lies Wim Jan Smuts. Um, so she's obviously quite shocked and says, well, you know, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, and he says, well, I'm, I was waiting for you. Um, anyway, in short order, she tells him to um, leave the room uh, immediately, which he does, you know, and he, and he gets out and there's no further sort of talk about it until now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Pete Bjorkus uh, mentions that story. Yeah. Well, that's, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, Angus. Thanks, James. Can I just mention, though, before I end, is that I do weave some of these tales into my Yes. book that's just been released called yes. South Africa in the name of the father. Now yes. the father being referenced there's partly a reference to Jan Smuts as the father of the nation. And anyway you can find that book on Amazon. <laughs>